Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits Podcast, episode 81. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. I am recording this podcast that is mostly about knitting and any other sort of wool and things that I, um, any craft and things that I like to talk about. I'm recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania where I live with my family, my husband and my eight-year-old daughter and my soon five-year-old daughter. I am originally from Sweden but I have been in Australia for maybe 15 years. I've sort of lost track. Um, yes, I have been recording this podcast for a few years now. And this is my time to sit down and relax and talk about things that I love. And uh, it's some of my very favorite time. And I'm always so thankful for you out there who check in on the podcast and watch my episodes. Or if you follow me on Instagram, if you send me comments and messages, I'm so thankful and it makes my life just that little bit extra um, great, amazing. And thinking, or when I'm talking about that, it makes me think of that I actually have a giveaway happening on Instagram at the moment. I reach 1500 followers on Instagram and I know that's not a huge amount compared to some other accounts on Instagram, but for me it was, um, it feels like that's an amazing number. And I've just had so many people that have favorited my Etsy shop. And my Etsy shop is Rosehip Island, if you're curious to um, see um, my hand-dyed yarn. It's all hand-dyed yarn in the shop. Um, yeah, so I'm just amazed by the number of people that come to my shop and favorite my shop and all my amazing reviews on my Etsy shop. And people that subscribe to this podcast and friend me on Ravelry. It's just like everything. Everyone who's in, who in some form um, favorite me or anything that I do or follow me. I'm just so thankful and grateful. So I thought it was time to have a giveaway. And I don't have it to show here now, but the giveaway is... Um, a copy of my mitten pattern, the Lund mitten, and a skein of the yarn that I used for that design, which is my Tasmanian Ethical Superfine Merino, which is the white gum wool base in the DK weight. So that's on Instagram. So if you want to enter that giveaway, just um, look a few posts back on my Instagram account, Rose Hip Chick, and you'll be able to see that. The giveaway will finish Saturday 24th of November, midday, um, Melbourne, Australia time. So when I'm recording, there's still a couple of days to um, enter that giveaway. And if you have entered the giveaway, thank you so much. <laughs> so that's that. I got sidetracked straight away. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's been a little while, I don't know how long it's been. My last episode was episode 80 when part of it was when I had the wool gatherings um, Tassie, Love, Tassie Wool Lovers Tour audience for some of it. And um, yes, it was a little bit of a different episode. I hope uh, you all enjoy that if you watched it. Uh, since that um, pop-up shop I did and the podcast, I've had a bit of a... Um, more relaxing time I guess I think I just had so many things going on that when I had a chance I just took it a bit easier for a while so the shop had so much stuff in it that I felt that I could take a little bit of a break from dyeing the only dyeing really I have been doing is custom orders and uh, that's something I'm always happy to do so if you see something in my shop or you just have something in mind just always I'm always happy if you contact me and ask me if there's something that I can do for you that, for a custom order I quite enjoy um, dying with sort of um, the aim of something that someone wants <laughs> I guess 
So yes, you can always request a custom order and I'm, you know, I'll say yes if it's something that I can do. Or, and I haven't said no to anyone so far, but of course, if it's something that I feel is out of my comfort zone or something that's just impossible for me to do with my materials and tools, then I'll say no. But so far, I've never had to say no to a custom order. Okay, uh, so it's been a few weeks since the pop-up shop. I've mostly just had, well, I can't say time off because I've still been working and, um, you know, looking after my children and the house and, and doing everything. I can feel how we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. And I think I say this every year, being a Swedish person or Swedish expat who grew up in Sweden, Christmas time or leading up to Christmas in Australia is just not the same <laughs> and um, it's very hard for me to get into the Christmas uh, spirit I guess. I'm, I'm just so happy that summer is here and it's warming up and we're having lovely days and soon we'll be able to go for swims in the pool and summer, um, summer holidays will start in a few weeks so all of that is just amazing and great and I think that's enough and then we put the Christmas on top of that it's just sort of cake on cake for me um, but anyway uh, Christmas uh, will still it's always fun and uh, my daughters are really excited of course so uh, that's coming up and I've started planning a little bit for Christmas maybe some Christmas crafting and baking and things like that but so far uh, not too much. Uh, today is a bit of a wet and grey day. I hope that it's the, the light of the podcast will be okay. It's not ideal natural light but uh, it's the best we can do today and today is the day that I can record and it's the day that I need to record because I really be needing to sit down and just Talk about knitting and share it with you. Um, what more can I say? I've talked about the giveaway and we haven't really had anything exciting happen since last time I recorded. Um, oh, so I think today I have quite a bit of knitting to share with you. It's all knitting today might show some stuff that I dyed at the end if there's time for that um, but yes I realized that uh, I have quite a few things to share with you um, so that's what I would like to do today so of course what I'm wearing this is the raindrops top that I I think I had only just finished it at my uh, last episode uh, now it's been blocked and it's all completely finished the raindrops um, is a pattern by Tim Can Knits and it's meant to be I think a three quarter sleeve and uh, I made mine short sleeve because I was just after a pattern that I could use to make myself sort of a tea or something that would only use two skeins of a sock yarn you knit this top down so I was able to get it to a length that I liked and when I had finished the body I just picked up the sleeve as per the pattern and then I just basically knit until I ran out of yarn and for the whole top I alternated the skeins and then for the sleeves I just I used only um, the same skein didn't alternate the the skeins there and you can see that it does show a little bit but I really don't mind I think I think that's fine uh, yes and I just sort of did a finishing the same way as you do at the bottom of, of the body um, so it's just sort of a bit of a roll up um, hem there and it's the same at the start and at the, the bottom hem um, I think this, I've, I have knit this pattern before. I made a, a long sleeve raindrops jumper for my daughter. She has now grown out of it. So 
so it's waiting for my youngest to be able to fit into it or for her to grow into it <laughs> so I knew that I like the pattern I think it's really easy enjoyable not boring knit and of course um, this yarn that I used is my own hand dyed sock yarn it's the Luisa's wedding colorway which is um, has a bit of orangey peachy pink and navy in it and some undyed um, as well so yes that's what I used and I just wanted it to be quite simple because the yarn is quite busy <laughs> but it was fun to have this um, sort of yarn over lacy um, raindrop pattern on the yoke it does have a quite a massive um, neck opening so it and it doesn't have short rows in the back it's the same back and front so it does go back quite um, the neck is quite low down in the back so I do I think I prefer to have my hair down and, and cover my back a bit but apart from that it, it, when I first saw the neckline I thought that was huge and it was going to sort of fall off my shoulders but it sits really really well on and I have just a white singlet underneath um, today so I'm very very happy with this top super happy this is the first time I have made a larger project with my delicious sock yarn and it's just mm, really nice really nice I really enjoy it um, so yes that's what I'm wearing that's what I've, I've really really finished since last time I'm very happy with it today when it's a rainy overcast day but it's not too cold it's really perfect to wear I'll see how much into summer and summer temperatures I'll be able to wear it for <laughs> so now I like to make more short sleeve tops but I would like to make just a completely plain and I was thinking about modifying this pattern but because it has the written instructions for how to do these um, lace bits with the increasing I don't know if it will be a bit complicated to just sort of pick that apart and just do the increases without the lace otherwise I know there's other similar patterns with just plain um, just a plain knitted tee so I'll look into that but I do have a few other things that I also want to knit so it might be a while still until I uh, I'll do that you just have to see okay so that's raindrops by tin can knit in my own delicious sock yarn in the Luisa's wedding colorway okay and then I actually finished another knit that I've been working on and they are the Sock of Roses by Maya Carlson. I didn't have a lot left to do last time, I think. I show these. Um, these were a mystery knit along. Um, and the designer is Maya Carlson. She's Maya's Manufacture on Instagram. And I have some of her books of patterns. She's a great designer. And yes, she's her Instagram account is just full of inspiration it's amazing but this mystery knit along was a collaboration or it was something that was done through the Swedish yarn company Yabu Yarn Yabu <laughs> um, so it's on their blog and it's a free pattern I used the my hand dyed Tassie what do I call it the Tassie sock Tasmanian Ethical Superfine Merino Sock Yarn which is 80% Superfine Merino and 20% Nylon and it's the White Gun Wool Base which is here from Tasmania just uh, down the road in Oatlands um, and yes I just used two skeins that I had that I had been using for a demonstration so they were not going to go into the shop and uh, uh, I did wash them and block them. I'm really happy with them. I'm, I really like this um, sort of false um, K 
cable pattern and I like how it's also on the, the heel flap. Yes, yeah, so that's those ones. I'm very happy with them. And they are most likely going to be a Christmas present for someone. That's those. And I can't remember now how much of the yarn I use, but not very much. The thing with the, the white gum wool basis, the Tasmanian Ethical Superfine Merino, is that they're, I think they're classified a as a light fingering. They have a lot of meterage per 100 gram. So the skeins just keep going and keep going. And yes, I've made a pair of socks, but I still feel like I have a lot left and I don't have it here. But yes, I still have a lot left from each skein. So that was those. Th that was those Sock of Roses by Maya Carlson. And I do recommend this pattern. It's um even if you haven't done colour work or cables and it's it's all very well explained and there's a, on the blog where the pattern is they have links to um, different resources where you can where they show how to do different things. That's those. And actually now that I'm showing these, um, I think it was through these socks. Or maybe it was someone who mentioned something on a podcast I watched. But I discovered a new podcast. And it's a Swedish podcast called Kias Bud. But she also she she records her podcast episodes in Swedish, but also in English. She started off only doing it in Swedish. And then the last maybe five episodes. I think she's on episode maybe 23. The last maybe five episodes, she's done them in both Swedish and English. And uh, Kia, who's the lady who, who does that, she's in west western part of Sweden and close to where I went to school and I just really like her way of speaking and reminds me of my time when I, I, I lived in, in that sort of part of Sweden. Um, and I love all of her projects. She does a lot of a lot of knitting and some spinning and some sewing and she's just so creative and she made a pair of these socks and I can't I don't know maybe that was how I found her because I was following the ha um, hashtag for these socks on Instagram so I've been seeing everyone who's been making these socks and I know she did them so maybe that's how I found her but I'm not sure anyway it's a great podcast Um, you should check it out if you're interested in, in uh, another podcast Um. Yes, I've been enjoying that. I can't remember now what I was going to say, but yes, Kia Spood. Okay, and and then there's something that I started and finished since last time I recorded. I did mention that I was going to do it. So Stephanie Lotman, who is Telebean Knits, on Instagram I think and maybe needles and yarn on Ravelry she is the designer behind the sock arms sweater and they are fingering weight sweaters where you use self striping sock yarn for the sleeves and I know I've, I've probably shown this before that I wanted to make it I have the pattern both adult and kid sizes but she had a call out for a worsted weight um, pattern of the sock arms and I put my hand up and I had only just done her mystery knit along oh, I'll show you that later but I did some mittens that she designed as a mystery knit along so I'd been sort of talking with her a bit online and and she said oh yes you know please um, test knit for me that will be fun and I said okay well I think I'll ask my four-year-old daughter to do a painting of what she would like this sweater to look like. I had told her or shown her a photo of like, what the picture of the pattern so she could see that the, the sleeves were striped and then one solid color on the body. 
So I asked her to do a, a painting of what she would like her sweater to look like. And one day she came home from school and she had a painting with her. And it was this one. So as you can see, it's a sort of sun flower, sun yellow um, body. And there's the ribbing and the ribbing, uh, no, the neckline ribbing and the bottom band ribbing. And then the sleeves are stripy and she has done like one rainbow sweep sequence for each sleeve. So this is what you wanted and I thought, well, obviously I have to dye this up and recreate it in an actual jumper for her because, you know, if I have all the materials and tools as an indie dyer to dye up yarn, this is really like, this is, this is just the best thing you can do really with your tools and materials and knowledge. So I set out to create that, um, those colors to make her the worsted sock arms. And I started it, I dyed it up, I posted this on Instagram, I had dyed it up, I started knitting it and it didn't take long and it was all done. So here it is. And what I used to dye was my new yarn base which is the Dandy DK and I this was my first test of, of dyeing it and knitting with it and it was like it's perfect. Took the dye really well and it knitted up really really well. Uh, so the Dandy DK is the DK base from Nandal Woolen Mill and so my Dandy sock yarn is the sock yarn base from the Nandal Woolen Mill. But yes here it is. So the you start from the bottom and knit up and it has the rounded hemline there so it's a little bit um, goes, uh, it's a little bit longer in, in the back and there's an option of not doing that but I really wanted to try that because I wanted to know how that construction actually worked how you make that happen and it's so funny because in this in this pattern obviously to you know, there's short rows here and there's short rows when you set in the sleeves and short rows and picking up stitches is always something that um, I hesitate, not hesitate, but it almost always makes me a bit nervous and worry that it's not going to end up looking nice and finished. But with this pattern, I just did it. And I don't know if it is because it's worsted weight and that sort of hides things a bit more, but... I just kept knitting following the pattern and I was just I kept being surprised at how nicely things looked when I did them. So I did the body in the yellow. Um, I used this is size six. I used 200 grams minus this much for the body and then I did a some striping self striping DK weight in the same base in sort of trying to recreate what she had put on her picture on her painting and I had, had 100 grams for this one and I still have quite a bit left in my Ravelry project pages I have all the details for how much yarn I have used and, and all those things what needle sizes and stuff and I was able to start the color sequence in exactly the same spot on both sleeves so I got them looking exactly the same and I because I did a size 6 and my daughter is about to turn 5 I just followed the measurements in the pattern because I thought if I do like the sleeve length according to what she likes now then when she's actually 6 it will be too short for her so I thought it, it does fit her now really well but it does have a bit of growing room as well which is good because we're in the summer season and it will be good if, if it will fit when we get colder weather again I'm so super happy with this and I 
hope I can get my daughter to model it a bit later and if she does I'll put some footage in of that. this pattern and it is now released um, as of yesterday I think and uh, I want to make more so actually this morning oh, I just have to show the comparison of the picture and the, of the painting and the sweater I think I did quite a good job with recreating that <laughs> okay so I wanted to make another one Straight away so this morning I started swatching and oh I actually I had dyed up some other um, skeins of the dandy DK and I was thinking about using that for a daughter for a sweater for my older daughter um, and this I don't know if that would be enough for the sock arms but then I thought, no, I want more a similar thing with a, a solid body and then the stripy sleeves or some fun sleeves. So I I left this. It won't it won't be for her. It will probably I'll probably list that in the shop actually at some point. Um but I looked through my different yarns in my stash and I have a few um yarns that I have larger quantities of especially I don't have a lot that I have all in the same colorway enough for a long sleeve uh, jumper but I do have some yarn that I have several colorways in the same base so I could do something with them together and you know all of this yarn that I picked up from Bendigo Woolen Mills. This is the Stella, which is a woolen bamboo 50 50. And I have quite a few different pinky purple colors of that. And they are originally I bought them to make my daughter a sweater, but then she wasn't really interested in hand knit sweaters, so I decided to make myself something. So I actually made the and now I can't remember the name of it, but I made myself a color work jumper out of it but I still had so much left like masses and masses I have five almost five full balls of that and my daughter now has actually been wearing a lot of my hand knit sweaters that I have made for her and I think now she only has one that still fit her so I thought okay I I really enjoyed the worsted sock arms pattern and I would like to make her one as well so I started swatching with that Stella from Bendigo Woolen Mills and I'm swatching in the blue that I have the least of because that's what I use for the the base color for my jumper and I just cast on I thought oh, I better do the swatch in the round and I did a long tail cast on and I just sort of put on as many stitches as I, as I could before I ran out of the end <laughs> And I think this is, maybe it will fit a doll if I make a beanie. But I just started swatching on 3mm needles, which is what I used for this one. And I think uh, I'm getting a gauge that that's okay, that will work. So my plan is to do the sock arms in this Stella yarn from my oldest daughter. I'll probably make the largest kid size. And then... I plan to do the ribbing in grey and the body in a dark pink probably and then the other pinks I'll find some way of, of striping them. So it will be a bit more work I guess because there will be more ends to weave in but I really enjoy the pattern and it will be absolutely great if I can use up that stash that's leftovers that I have just been wanting to make something out of because I really enjoy the colors of that so yes so that's 
yes I just got this finished and I started swatching for a new one <laughs> and that's what um, that's what I finished and something had started this morning <laughs> Or maybe we'll have a, a tea news break. Today I'm having some pumpkin chai and pumpkin spice it's called chai and I've heard a lot about this type of tea from I think it's mostly American podcasts and I was curious and when I was looking to buy Christmas tea I wanted some Christmas tea for the advent calendars that I sent out they're all sold, all sent out. Thank you so much to everyone who purchased one. I hope you really enjoy opening them in December. So when I was looking for Christmas tea, there was a website that sold Christmas tea and then they also had these and some other fun teas. So I thought I'll, I'll get one of those and try it out. So that's what I'm drinking today. And I, first time I had it, it was a little bit weird. Uh, but now I now that I know what to expect, I am really enjoying it. As you can see, it's rose season now. The garden is full of beautiful roses. They're not. Um, they're starting to get a little bit tired. But because it's raining outside today, I didn't want to go and pick any new ones. So they're still beautiful. Okay, so I finished a few things then. And I have started a few things and I'm working on some stuff. So I'll show you that now. What do I show you first? Mm. That's done. Oh, my, the Mr. Remittance that I just spoke about before that Stephanie Lotman um, designed. I don't think I had finished it completely last time. Maybe I had. If I had, I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, but I did put in the, the thumb on that mitten. And these mittens are identical, two identical mittens, so you can wear them. Um, you'll have a lady on the top of one, and then you'll have the, the man on top of, of the other hand. I made these again in the Tasmanian Ethical Superfine Merino, which is the white gun wool base, and the 100% Superfine Merino. And they're beautiful and soft, and it works so well with color work. I now have 50 gram skeins of this base in my shop. So if you want to do a color work project, 50 grams is plenty for, for a color work project. A small color work project so I've completed one and I've only just started the second one <laughs> so I first I thought oh I don't really need to finish it anytime soon we're going into summer but then I had this idea that maybe I should give them to someone for a Christmas present so that means that I would have to hurry up and work a bit on them I really haven't touched them for weeks it was um, a really fun mitten pattern and if I wasn't so distracted by everything else, especially the sock arms, then I would have started or and I would have knit more on the second mitten. And then I don't have many things that I have been working on for a while. I do have my garter squish blanket by... Um, Stephen West. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's called the Garter Squish and I'm using all my DK weight leftovers. I use um, holding three strands together and I'm working on 15 millimeter needles. So far I've used sort of greens and blues. And I have a little bit left of that but um, it's going quite it's eating up my leftovers quite quickly so in not too long well if I was working on it I haven't worked on it for a while but if I was working on it i would be running out of green pretty soon and I then will start with the next color which might be have I said this before I can't remember myself what color I would do and this is the Emma bag 
by Sharon Dreyfus. I looked it up after last time, I think. So um, I, that was a mystery in it as well that I did years and years ago. It did have different felted handles, but I put these handles on that I had. And then I have started some other new things that I'm working on. And let's see what I have. So I finished all my socks. And of course, in my beautiful sock bag from Sandra of Craftfulness, I needed a new pair of socks to work on. Because you can't be a knitter and not have socks on the needles. <laughs> At least I can't. I struggle then. Um, so I have my disco ball in here still so that my socks are always strictly dancing socks. I saw a pattern by Holly Dapp on Instagram and Holly Dapp now designs under the label North Pacific Knits I think. Um, Holly used to live in Australia when her husband was doing a PhD here and I met her once in Melbourne which was lovely and she's just uh, a lovely person and she had a podcast and she's recently taking that up again and uh, I hope she will continue doing more episodes because I really enjoy catching up with Holly but she had posted on Instagram that she had a new sock pattern released and the sock pattern is the Tahola I think socks and I think the pattern is part of a kit that you can buy but you can also buy just the pattern so I purchased that pattern and she's having a Instagram knit along that I think starts on 23rd of November. I could be wrong. But I wanted to knit that pattern. And first I was going to do it in some other yarn from some leftovers. But then I remembered that I had some sock yarn from Sandra of Craftfulness that I got when I received this bag from her in a swap. And I had a kit, a summer sock uh, kit, which is in out of the box space, which is a 75% merino, 15% silk, 10% linen. And I had a 50 gram ball of one colorway and a 20 gram um, skein of another um, colorway. And I love this um, yarn base and I thought that goes with my testing out all the all natural socks and it's summer now here so it goes with that and I just really wanted to knit with this yarn so this what looks like it's a bit messy now so this was the 20 gram and this was the 50 gram and I divided the the main color up in two balls so I could do two at a time so I have <clears throat> started on this Tahola socks by Holly Dapp and I am really enjoying it I have my blingy stitch markers so they're all strictly socks <laughs> um, yes I don't know if you can see it really well yeah so that's those I did realize after doing the pattern repeat maybe three times that I have been doing it incorrectly, but that's fine. I might just keep doing it incorrectly or I might correct myself. <laughs> I'll see. I've been really enjoying them. And what I have been doing is that I have been trying my new sock needles that I got not long ago. And they are the, the Sock Wonders from Addy. And the Sock Wonders are the nine inch circular needles but they have a shorter needle at one end and a longer needle at the other end. And I'm, I'm not sure which way you're going to use them, but I knit with the short needle, taking off the long needle and putting on the short needle. So I work with the shorter needle in my right hand. And that seems to be working fine. I found it a little bit tricky at the start, but I think it's always the case with nine inch circles that it's tricky when you're just starting. Um, the only thing with these needles is that I think they're a bit blunt. 
in this pattern you have to do knit it together and I find it a little bit tricky with these ones they're not very sharp um, I don't think Addies are very sharp I do have a, a sock rocket circular needle from Addy that I'm going to try as well and another pair of socks that I have ready to start and um, I purchased these at the same time just to be able to try different needles and see what, how they are and how they're different I think they are sharper the sock rockets but these ones seem a bit blunt and my other nine inch circulars that I have are I think the Knit Pro Novas which are sharper and the Chiago which are also sharper I think but I have to knit with my other ones at the same time on something else to actually be able to make that comparison Yes, so these are my new sock project on the needles and hopefully I can have them finished by Christmas to either give to myself or to someone else. <laughs> we'll see. And I just love this bag. I really, really love it. Thank you, Sandra. It was just a perfect, perfect thing in our swap. And then, do I have one thing left? Yes, um, I think it was when I had finished this sweater the other night and I only had to weave in all the ends but I just I just needed a break from that I just needed something really simple I had not cast on the socks yet I think no I didn't have any socks or anything simple I had my garter stitch uh, the garter squish blanket but that's quite heavy now and Yes, but movements with the hand just quite big and it's it's not really relaxing knitting anymore. And I have a shawl that I haven't worked on for a while. That wasn't very relaxing. So I just decided to cast on a simple knit hat. And when I dyed up my last skeins of my Deluxe DK, it's a base that I will no longer have after I've sold out in the shop but it came on cones and at the end I had a I think 60 gram skein left and I dyed that up in my shock hazelnut colorway when I dyed I dyed some full skeins as well and then I dyed the, the partial skeins and I just kept that for myself and I've just been really wanting to knit it up and see what it looks like um, so I decided to just get that started and I started to knit a hat or a beanie. I wanted this to be just plain knitting to really show off the speckling of the yarn. What I did was that I used the barley hat pattern by Tin Can Knits but in the barley hat there's a garter rich section and I just didn't do that. I've just basically just use the cast on numbers and then I'm just knitting plain and um, I am really enjoying how that's working out it's quite a small hat it's a child size I also really like the pearl side with this colorway yes yeah, so I that's just really nice comfort knitting this base is so soft and easy to work with and they're on my higher highers uh, it is on my higher highers and they're nice and sharp and they're just really fast to knit with so it's just a lovely combination of yarn and needles and of course the colorway it's just so much fun to see how it's speckling the shock hazelnut has browns and then a few different greens and some reds in there so I think that's the last project that I have been working on. I don't know who this will be for. It will just depend on who it fits when it is finished. Yes. Oh, next on my on my list that I have here, my show notes is my dream knitting. But I have already talked about that because that was my next sock arms jumper. That is my dream knitting.
Well, my tea is going really cold, which means that it must be time to um, finish this up soon. Also, it's getting darker outside. I think we have a lot more rain coming in. The last thing that I wanted to share with you is sort of a dying, well, it is a dying project. If you have watched episodes before or followed me on Instagram or in some way seen photos of my projects, I don't know why I keep putting things up there, they always fall down. Um, well, you might have seen um, this shawl that I made a while ago. This is the Merrick's Shawl by Whiskey Bay Woolens. I did this as a test knit, I think. Yes, I did. And what the yarn that I used for this was uh, my Sea Spray Colorway, but um, I had a new yarn base. This is the yarn base that I use for the advent calendars. And this is the Victoria Sock yarn base, which I now only sell in the Knits, Needles and Wool shop in Launceston. But because I had a new yarn base, I want to see how it worked compared to my old base. So these um, skeins were actually in the same dye bath at the same time. And you can see how different they took the dye. And then the border was out of my new sock yarn base, the Delicious Sock, in a, a different colorway in the, in the 50s, I think I call that one. Uh, so that was that one. And I had this as a sample at my pop-up shop. And I had someone ask if I could recreate the colors for her to make this shawl. And of course, I, I took on that um, challenge and I thought about it a bit and oh, okay, so what colors and because it's actually the same colorway, they're just different yarn bases. So I had to experiment and alter my dye recipe to get these different um, shades. And also for in the 50s colorway, I did not have the recipe. But what I find now is that I know my dye so well that when I, I see a colorway, I can actually see what dyes I have used. Even if it's mixed or several layers of colors, I just have a, it's not only that I can see what the color is, it's also that I have, I know myself, so I know what I would have done. <laughs> Maybe that sounds weird, but yes. I guess it's just experience, really. So I set out to try to recreate these colorways and I thought it would be tricky and that I would have to have a few goes at it, but I surprised myself and I think I managed to do it. And I did these on the Delicious Sock Yarn Base, which is what that one is. So let's see if we can hold these up together. So I think I was able to do that. So there's the darker sea spray, the lighter sea spray, that's a bit of grey in it, and then the in the 50s colourway. So I just want to share that with you because I'm just super happy with how I was able to do that. And I do have two sets of these and one already has a um, name on it <laughs> so yeah that was just um, something I wanted to share I think that's all for this time except for one thing that I wanted to just I wanted some maybe feedback or some comments if anyone has the time or interest I, um, Etsy recently changed how they show you sort of payments and bills and everything. It's really um, breaking it down so you much clearer can see where the money is going, you know, money coming in and then where it goes off to for the different fees and everything. 
And it made me realize when I looked at that how much of my, um, well, of the actual income that comes into Etsy just disappears in the fees to Etsy. And um, I, I have known that it, they do take quite a chunk out of the money that come in, but actually seeing it itemized, um, it's just, Yes, I wasn't expecting it to be that much and it's quite a large percentage of, of the sales price, I guess. And you know, there's a car transaction fee, there's a listing fee, there's a just a payment fee. There's just, yes, a lot of disappears and I almost find it hard to actually see what they're doing. But anyway, I have been thinking uh, about what are the advantages with Etsy, what is it that I'm actually getting for the money that I pay them. I do like Etsy as a platform and I do a lot of shopping myself in Etsy or at least a lot of window shopping and I really like it, it's easy for me to use. But I, I wanted to know if anyone has any comments or any, um, have any opinions on sort of Etsy as a platform and Etsy to shop from and if you use Etsy a lot if is that the place you go when you're looking for hand dyed yarn and comparing that to the indie dyes that have their own websites there's quite a few indie dyes now that have their own websites both large well-known indie dyes and smaller indie dyes I think maybe because I sell in Etsy I just naturally go to Etsy when I'm looking for hand dyed yarn and I sometimes sort of forget about the dyes to have their own websites which is silly. It maybe it would have been different if I wasn't a dyer myself. Um, but I've, I've just been lately thinking about okay so should I pay my money to Etsy for what they provide or should that money go to having my own website? So, is anyone out there that has some, you know, ideas or comments or any sort of, I don't know, anything, anything to say about that? What do you think? What What do you prefer? How do you shop for uh, hand dyed yarn? Do you, is it natural to go to those, um, standalone websites that indie dyes have? Do you have maybe your favorite dyer that you keep going to when you you need hand dyed yarn? I guess I, I, I've just, it's something I've been thinking about and just like where do I, where do I put my money? And I want to keep my prices like they are. I don't want to have to increase the prices of what I sell. But it might be now that it says it, they're even taking a fee for the postage. So it actually costs me money to like sell the postage. Um, I just, I might have to just rethink everything. And I don't want to put the prices up, but I guess that's just a cost with using Etsy maybe. Anyway, I don't know. It's just something I've been loosely been thinking about and um, I, I really have no clue at the moment what I'm going to do. Everything is just staying the same at the moment. But I would be really um, interested to hear if you have any opinions or comments or experience about um, selling on Etsy or having your own website and, and about your your personal shopping and what you prefer and what you what you like and what you dislike and all that sort of stuff so yes any comments about that would be great okay it's um, starting to get a bit windy outside and a bit darker and I think the more rain is coming in so I'm going to finish now and we'll see when I'll get some time to edit and upload this podcast hopefully it will be in not too long um thank you so much for joining me today i really appreciate it and all 
the thumbs up that I get they just warm my heart and when my subscription subscriber numbers um, increase that's just really fun really fun so um, thank you everyone for watching if you have watched my podcast for the first time I, I hope it was something you enjoyed and that you will come back again I just want a little community to be a nice happy place for everyone so that's it for today thank you very much for watching so until next time take care everyone see you next time